Okay, this lab covers an interesting topic, exploiting blind XXE to retrieve data via error messages. So in this case, we're trying to exfiltrate the contents of Etsy password. So in previous labs, you may have done out of band data exfiltration, and that required you to use an external DTD because you had to stack entities or dynamically declare one entity within another entity. And we'll have to do the same here. But instead of referencing a, a single line file like Etsy hostname, we're gonna be referencing a multi-line file, Etsy password. And when you try to exfiltrate data in the same manner and reference Etsy password, the application either only returns the first line of the file over HTTP, or because of that new line character, you get nothing returned at all. So what can we do? Well, we have two different options. The first one is we can use FTP. You have to remember with SSRF using external entities, we could pretty much use whatever URI scheme we want. We could even do PHP filter and base64 and code files, HTTP or FTP. But in this case, because of egress restrictions, we're only able to get requests sent from the application to go to Burp Collaborator or the exploit server. So that's a no-go here. The second option is using error messages. So if the application does return error messages in relation to XML parsing, then technically we can trigger an error message. And within that error message will be the contents of the file that we're trying to exfiltrate. I know it probably sounds a little complicated, but let's go ahead and dive right in and see if we can get into detail here. Okay, so we have the lab here. We'll click view details, grab that request, check stock, throw that to repeater with control R. That looks good. So what we can do here is we can just initially declare an entity like we did last time. So what we'll do is we'll tack on that payload from last time, entity, and we're gonna go ahead and load DTD from the exploit server. And then we also need to reference load DTD stack exploit or er, exfil. Close the doc type. Now we'll go to our exploit server and we'll go ahead and we need three entities technically. We need a file entity, which is the file that we're trying to exfiltrate. Let's see, we'll do hostname just to be safe for now. Just so we can do a known good payload here, stack, which is going to stack those entities, entity. And then we need a character reference here because of the inline percent sign. This is going to be exfil system. And this is going to be HTTP S. It's going to be our exploit server. Let's go ahead and copy this. And at the end of this is going to be our file. Send it. If we refresh, we'll see that we have the contents of Etsy hostname returned. Now let's try changing that to Etsy password. Store, send, and you'll see the application error changes here. And if we refresh this access log, we only have exploit returned here. So in this case, we get an error, a legal character in URL. So that new line character is throwing an error here. So what we need to do is we just change this up a little bit. So instead of stack, or excuse me, instead of exfil, we're just gonna change this to error. And we don't really need to change the name of this error, this entity, but we're doing so just for um, clarity's sake. Instead of sending the contents of this file entity to our exploit server, what we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger an error condition. So we're gonna have this error entity reference a non-existent resource. So I do not exist. And then forward slash the contents of the file that we're trying to exfiltrate. So what's gonna happen is, the XML parser is going to evaluate this error entity and it's going to try to reach out to a non-existent resource and it's going to return an error containing, hey, we can't find the file I do not exist forward slash all of Etsy password. So we're going to store this, send this, and boom, now we see the contents of Etsy password. Because if we look at this application error, it's saying the I do not exist forward slash Etsy password, no such file or directory. So that's a pretty cool way of exfiltrating multi-line files in band. But remember, it does require out of band interaction because in order for you to be able to stack entities or declare dynamic entities within another entity, you need to have an external DTD. So it does require that in this case. And it also does require that the application have XML parsing errors. So while it is pretty particular when you can exploit this, when you can, it's really useful to exfiltrate a lot of sensitive data from multi-line files. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. 
But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.